how about we stop wasting time making bad UIs for games? UI is this thing that is often put until the very last moment when you build a game. And that's not necessarily good because I think UI is as important as the gameplay itself. Now, game UIs are also one of the things that is overly underestimated in terms of how much time and energy it requires to actually make something good. So today let's talk about what makes a good UI and also I will share with you a simple four step process to actually make that UI. And I will show you a tool that will help you tremendously into that and that will save you a ton of time. So let's get into it. So what would make a good UI? Well, let's graph it out, all right? So on one side we would have how immersive it is. And on the other side we would have, if it's not immersive, it would be basically deathless, kind of boring, okay? Ideally, of course, you want to be on this side. But we have also a vertical line that separates between how intuitive it is, I think, and if it's not intuitive, it's basically confusing. So ideally, ideally, you would want to be in this zone right here. You won't want a UI that is very intuitive and very immersive. And what means immersive? It means that when you play your game, you, the UI seamlessly blends with the game, with the world, it's all fit together. One example of immersive and intuitive, I would say, just an example that comes to my mind, is Wolfenstein 3D. So in Wolfenstein 3D, you have your character and you don't have a, really a health bar, even though it, I think it shows the health, but you have your, your profile of the character that changes based on how badly hurt you are. And this is very intuitive. You're not putting this square, but it could be there. It's very intuitive because it's directly clear, well, you are bleeding, this is bad, you know? You have also the health bar of that space, which is, I think, the most intuitive and the most immersive health bar probably of any game. So it's a third person game, right? And you see on the back of the player, this health indicator on the player itself. So even though we are talking about UIs, this is not part of the UI, it's part of the world, but I consider this UI because this is kind of a, a statistic or a value that you want to communicate to the player in a most immersive and intuitive way. And this is super intuitive and super immersive. Now things like, let's say, uh, an RPG, like World of Warcraft or whatever, you have most of the time something like this. Is this immersive? It's not really immersive. Like the, the UI is clearly, like it fits the game, but it's not that 100% immersion. You are a bit taken a little bit step back, but it's still intuitive. So I would, for example, Put it here. Now one place of course you don't want to be is in this zone right here. You don't want to be deathless and confusing but you will be there and that's the thing. When you are developing you will be 100% there because you want to first well make sure your things are working. Maybe you need a few buttons here and there just for you to test features so you will be there. But ideally over time you want to move into this direction. And in a perfect world, you want to be always above this line. So all this zone here, you really want to avoid. A confusing interface, that's not something that is good. Everybody knows that. But it also depends who your target audience is, right? So deathless to immersion, I think is applicable to nearly the whole broad uh, player base. However, intuitive to and confusing is really depending on who you target. Let me give you an example. You take a Call of Duty player, you send him to Battlefield. The interface is different. The UI is different. That player will directly get it how it works. It is still intuitive for that player because an FPS player is used to all those FPS games. However, you take a COD player and you send him to escape to Starkov, well, the first few maybe months or weeks, it's going to be confusing, okay? But as the player gets used to that game, well, the confusion will reduce and it will become intuitive. So the intuitive part 
is something that depends on time and on play experience. So this one is difficult. Some games are, I mean, they don't have the immersion, but they're intuitive. As an example would be, um, I think many management games and many racing games, their interface are not always the most immersive interface. Uh, they are like sometimes just a modern layout. Uh, it's nice, it's modern, but it's not immersive, right? It's like, you see it's a clear separation of style compared to the actual um, uh, game itself. But most of the time they do that just to maximize how intuitive it can be made and just to make the navigation and all the settings easily accessible and easily to use. Now you can take any game and try to map them on that. Take a Animal Crossing player, send them to Call of Duty. It's going to be confusing and they might not care much about the immersion part because it's just going to be confusing for them. So that's really this part, like the intuitiveness is really based on who that, that player is. So how would you go about making the UI for a game and minimizing the amount of time you spend on that thing while still trying to make the best UI possible? So I think the first thing you would want to do is you would have to actually create a list of all the feature that your gameplay offers that needs to be mapped or used in a UI settings. So you have to know, okay, the player has health, I need to show health in some way. The player has mana or energy, I need to show that in some way or communicate that in some way. It's not necessarily about showing, it's more about communicating. Let's say you have items. Okay, I need a way to show which item is selected, maybe which item I'm about to delete, which item I'm about to move, this type of stuff. So you have to get an initial mapping of all the things you want to put on the UI. That would be number one. Number two would be to, so let's do more, mapping, okay? Number two would be research, okay? So instead of directly going into your game engine or your program and building what you want to build, I would actually start doing research. And here is a tool that I want to show you um, that is awesome in that. And that tool is called Interface in Games. It's a website and it's so awesome. It collects nearly, I mean, so many games, nearly all games, uh, lots of most recent games for sure. And it has all the interfaces, screenshots on it. So instead of doing yourself the research, someone did already those research or they did already the collection of those things. So you don't need to go online and go find everything, look at YouTube videos and so on. So since we talked about FPS games, how about we take an FPS game? So what we have here, we have, for example, Overwatch, Destiny and so on and so on. And they have a lot of them. Load more games, they have so many. So if I want to say, um, which one should we look at? Let's take a game that would be a good role model for such thing. So what would an indie game developer, solo indie game developer build by itself? Actually, an FPS would be kind of a terrible choice, I think. But nevertheless, let's just choose one of them. How about The Hunt? This was a great game, I think. So, select The Hunt Showdown, released 2018, and we have everything here. The recruitment the store, the bloodline, and you have tags, right? So you can find similar things from, for all the games based on tags, which is super useful. The library, the contracts, so and so on and so on. And use this as your research website, as a starting point. This is so awesome. You will, and this is why it's important to first do the mapping because then you know, okay, for each thing, I will choose one or two or three reference pictures uh, of UIs that I like. So for each one you do, you go find, let's say maximum three reference pictures. Sometimes you don't need more, but let's say for most features you need some reference picture and use it as a base. After this comes number three, okay? But let's say here, let's say you want rewards, okay? So this is a reward screen, get reward, maybe later and so on. And if you want to see how other rewards are made or other overlays are made is in category overlay. Let's find overlay 
and it's going to load you all kinds of overlay from all kinds of games. Uh, I mean, everything that has been tagged as overlay. Overlay might not be the best example, but it is actually really helping. And you see exactly in one glance, uh, instead of going on Google or anything else to try to find game overlay or finding some general search term to find things, this website actually regroups everything. And sometimes you have even the animation. So this is awesome. This is really great. So that would be step two. You do your research and you take everything that you need. You can download here. Step three would be to finally uh, prototype. So you create your prototype in your game and you see how it is. And when you prototype, you should prototype for intuitiveness. You should focus, I think, on this axis. So you don't want to spend time making it pretty and so on. You want to make it functional and intuitive. So you want to, in your prototype, be able to reach the top part so you're in the intuitive area. Once your interface is working and intuitive, well then, no matter where you stand here, you can try to move as much as possible into this direction based on how much time you want to invest in it, based on how skilled you are or based on uh, yeah, your resources available. So that's the, the prototype phase. So the prototype phase would be first, let's say A would be first, maximize intuitiveness, and B would be basically getting ready for step four, I guess, yes. And step four, what would be step four? Well, step four is the final step. Let me take white again. Ooh, I'm writing terribly. I cannot write with a mouse. Step four would be Polish, just Polish. Not the language, but the action. So here you have your interface. It is working, it is intuitive, it is functional. Well, you finally polish it, all right? You just make it pretty, you add all your art, you add all the sound effects, all the beeps and blobs and so on, and all the effects that makes the interface finished and polished. And of course, it's not linear. It would be too easy if it would be linear. So you move from here, I mean, you would probably do here to here, and here, you would probably have one loop at least like this. And sometimes if you are lucky, you just have a loop like this. And if you're unlucky, when you're in the polish phase, you might find things that are really broken and you need to go back, maybe here, maybe there, maybe in the beginning. But what you want to try to avoid as much as possible is to go back here. So your goal, to let's say maximize your resources and your time and minimize the time that you spend on UI is to reach the prototyping end of the prototyping phase and be 100% sure what you want to polish. If you are just directly jumping into the polish, uh, the prototyping phase or the polish phase, even worse, you miss the research, you miss the mapping, and you might just develop things spend time developing screens that you might even not use or even not be needed or they change in gameplay and so on. So for me, there's a, there's a wall here. There's a big milestone here that you need to pass. And that's a challenge for, for your eyes is to really get your research done and get your prototype really well done before you polish. And the polish part is, I think, the part that is the most underestimated. Like, it's so much work UI, and that's because the polish is so much work. <laughs> uh, so many little things to take care of to even make it nice and pretty and responsive on all the screens and so on. So that's all part of the polishing phase. I wanted to talk about that because, yeah, I just felt today I wanted to talk about interfaces. And that's about it. This website is really awesome. I hope it will help you in your game dev journey interface in game. I will put the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe and then go work on your game.